Companies like Avermedia have made 4K60 capture really easy. Get one of their compatible cards, load up their software, and hit record. That's basically all you need to share fun footage with your friends or to make videos showing gameplay. But what if you're a reviewer who wants to compare lossless 4K60 gameplay footage? Or maybe you've just designed a new 4K gaming scaler but don't want to show off lossy compressed footage. Or heck, maybe you're just a crazy person like me and sometimes you want to get perfect captures for no reason at all. Either way, this video is going to show you exactly what you need to get that done. First and foremost, in order to get lossless 4K60 or 1080p 120 captures, you'll need the fastest NVMe drives out there. You might be able to run a few older NVMe's in RAID, but you'll most likely get success with a minimum of a PCIe 4.0 7000 megabyte per second NVMe SSD. You can use the same drive as your OS drive, as I'll show here, which is good as most motherboards today only come with one PCIe 4.0 NVMe slot. And then of course, you'll need a capture card that can handle it. I've been using the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K for a few years with great results. There's a few more 4K cards in the market that could do it and a bunch coming within the next year, but you'll always want to double and triple check the spec sheets to make sure whatever card you're interested in can handle 4K60 in the 444 color space. As a note, you can't use Thunderbolt for this. If you'd like proof about that, I have an entire other video dedicated to it, as well as an interview with Wendell from Level 1 Techs where we discuss it in detail. The software requirements are much easier. All that's needed are a few Windows programs. And yes, this tutorial is only showing how to do it on Windows. I just don't have access to the newest Mac hardware to see if it's even possible. And Linux folk, well, Linux folk already know how to do everything anyway, using just the command line. Anyway, for Codex, I use UT Video to do the recording. Virtual Dub is the software that actually does the recording. And Media Player Classic Home Cinema, I use to play the files back. I also like to use Premiere for moving between frames because most playback software like MPC or VLC can't really do one frame at a time reliably. But I think there's free software out there that could probably do it as well. I just kind of stick to what I know. More on that in a bit. And lastly, are you sure that you need uncompressed video or would a combination of normally compressed video but uncompressed still shots be all that you would need to accomplish your goals? Avermedia's Rec Central, as well as Datapath's Vision software, allow fully uncompressed PNG still shots that don't require anything other than a 4K capture card. No crazy codecs or PC requirements at all for still shots. Maybe that's better for your needs? If you're still one of us crazy capture nerds, or if you're just curious how this all works, now it's time to get started. All right, to get started, we're gonna open the newest version of Virtual Dub 2, hit Capture and Capture AVI. Now, my capture card was already selected from the last time that I used it, but if you need to select which one you have, because as you can see, I have tons of options here, you just go to the device menu and select whichever capture card you're using. I'm using the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K. Then you gotta go to video and capture pin and make sure all of your settings are correct. This is exactly what we're going for today, 3840 by 2160 output resolution. That's, a, that's the full capture resolution. RGB 24 color space, so there's no color compression, and 60 frames per second. So we'll hit OK on that. I set it to preview system. I've had issues with this before, depending on what capture card I'm using. I've also had to use display with filters, or I've even had to get it all set up, then select no display to capture. But really, this has been working for me, so I'm going to leave it as is. Next, we're going to go to compression, and this is absolutely critical. The only codec I've tried on this PC that works is UT Video T2 RGB VCM. Not the non-T2 version, not anything else here, just that one. Nothing else had worked the same. And UT Video isn't my favorite codec. The file output size is larger than some of the others, and it's kind of slow to work in Premiere. So if anybody knows of any other format that will definitely work, not something you're on a forum somewhere, but one that you've tested, I will go back and retest as well and add any notes 
to this video description and any pages on the website. But for now, just UT Video T2 RGB VCM. You can see right here, it says no conversion required on output. And then we're just gonna go to file and set capture file and make sure that we're using the fast drive like I had described before. And then we're just gonna go to capture and capture video. And one thing that you're gonna wanna note, over here it says frames inserted and frames dropped. And this is simply because I'm also using OBS to record my screen at the same time. I'm gonna show an overlay of what this would look like without it. But if you're getting frames inserted or frames dropped, you're not getting a true 4K 60 capture. Uh, and in fact, you could even see here, the average rate is 38 frames per second captured. So this is bad, but only because I have OBS running. So once again, here's a screenshot of what it should look like. And now let's check out the end result of the file. So now you think you've captured lossless 4K60, but how can you be absolutely sure it really worked? I have two methods that I use to verify all this stuff, and the first one's pretty easy. Pick a mostly still scene in the footage you're looking to capture, and take a PNG or bitmap screenshot using the capture card software. Hopefully your capture card software can do this correctly, but Rec Central seems to do it perfectly. Then use MPC to pull a PNG screenshot from the same scene in the footage that you captured. Now just use your favorite photo software to zoom in and see if you could tell the difference. On the left is a compressed video capture from Rec Central, and on the right is the screenshot. Definitely a difference if you zoom in all the way. But now here's the capture we did in VDub on the left, which matches that still shot perfectly. So as long as your pictures match, that means that the video that you captured is also lossless and not compressing the colors or video in any way. But now it's time to test frame rate and make sure no frames were dropped or duplicated. If possible, use some kind of counter to make this easier. I'll use the 240p test suite. As you can see here, as I advance through the frames, every single one is shown. This confirms that the VDub's window reading of zero frames dropped or added was true. I'd also suggest skipping around the file a bit just to make sure it maintained. I'm sure we could use some sort of analysis software to check this as well, but I think this has been good enough for my short clips because whenever I had dropouts, it was really noticeable regardless of what part of the capture I was scrolling over to. For comparison, here's a recording that couldn't keep up with the full 60 frames per second. As you can see, some frames are drawn twice or just skipped. And just for reference, here's the exact same file I first showed that successfully captured all 60 frames per second, but as you can see, even though I'm using MPC's single frame advance command, it's still skipping. That's why I always use video editing software to verify frames and never playback software. Playback software always looks like it's dropping frames, even when it isn't. So now that you've captured and verified your footage, what are you gonna do with it? YouTube's gonna compress it to death, so how could you get it out to people? One easy way is to simply post the capture somewhere, but the files will be massive, and you'll have to also link people to players like MPCHC and the codec UT video to make sure people can actually play the files back. That should be fine for a few moments of video examples though, and great if you just need to get this stuff out there. To save space, you could convert the files to something a bit more efficient, but you'll probably still need to link people to the proper codec and player to play them back. 
And one more annoying issue, sometimes video editing software like Premiere won't let you directly import all of these different codec types. Meaning if you convert it once to a smaller codec, you might have to convert it again if the video editing software you use isn't compatible. I think this is gonna be a solution that's forever evolving as new codecs are released and new methods of capture are found. But for now, I think I'll just share what I did for the RetroTINK 4K launch video as maybe those methods might help any of you. All the footage of me walking through menus and showing basic features was just captured with the Rec Central software. It's lossy to start and then both Premiere and YouTube each compressed it again. And in my opinion, it really doesn't matter. I'm sure purists will disagree, but no one in their right mind would get mad because shots of a menu are overly compressed and not as sharp as they could be. That said, any of the footage that was meant to demonstrate results of the scaler was captured losslessly, and luckily UT Video imported right into Premiere. It's very clunky in the timeline, but it worked. So any of the important comparison shots were either that lossless UT Video that I had recorded, or still shots that I had pre-scaled in post, and then combined them into those comparisons as well. The result wasn't perfect, and I'm not sure it ever could be with internet streaming services, but I was happy with the results. You'll need to decide for yourself what's best for you, though. Well, that's about it for now. While I'm absolutely not an expert in video capture, I do think that 10 plus years of capturing footage for retro RGB has forced me to go a lot farther than your average person would for video capture methods. So I just wanted to share what I was doing here to help other people, at least until we evolve into better and easier methods. I'd like to thank members of the R3 Wiki and Discord for always helping me over the years, as well as my fellow content creators who've all patiently sat through my ridiculous nagging about this stuff. As always, I'll keep trying my best to improve, and anything that I learn or any new methods I come up with, I'll definitely document on RetroRGB.com, but there is one thing that I would love to see the community come up with. A way to export video directly from editing software like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere that compresses directly into the exact format that YouTube uses. I do realize that this will be a constantly evolving project as YouTube changes their codecs and their methods, but the ability to render video directly into the exact format that YouTube would have used anyway would make so many things easier. Not only would it prevent multiple compressions, but it would reduce the amount of time YouTube takes to process your video. And if you're previewing at home, you could get the exact sense of what it would be like after it's up on YouTube and fully compressed. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw here, please consider supporting the channel in any way possible. The monthly support services are what keeps all the videos, podcasts, and behind the scenes research going, but also just using affiliate links to buy the same stuff you were gonna buy anyway at the same price is also a massive help. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.